Hi everybody, I'm Dom Zook and uh, I'm with Saving Throw Show and we have the unique opportunity to preview a couple of cards from the new Doomtown set coming out August 17th as part of their new Kickstarter and joining me is our own Saving Throw Show <laughs> Doomtown <laughs> champion, Jordan Pridgen. I, 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 will claim, I will claim that even though you won it all on your own. You have nothing, you have nothing <laughs> no, to No, no, saving. saving Throw. Saving Throw got me into Doomtown. We yeah. founded a Gen Con and... And that's where it all got started. But yeah, ex <laughs> excited to be here and show off this new card. Awesome. So uh, let me pull up the card out here. Uh, so it's got somebody shooting another person in the gut. Uh, and the card is called Thirst for Blood. And Thirst for Blood. This is like classic Doomtown name, so yeah, nailed yeah. it. Uh, so let's start off with, with the, the suit and the, the rank of the card. Um, so... This card is a Queen of Clubs, which being a club means it's like an action. The suits really matter in Doomtown. They kind of tell you like what category the card falls into. And being a um, being a club means it's an action, which is something you do like most of the time like once. And it can often affect a shootout or uh, affect like the town during the day or the people on it. And Queen is sort of a limitation like... So in Doomtown, you make poker hands to try and beat mm -hmm. the other people. So you might run a deck with lots of queens in it to try and like make it stronger. So that it also is a limit of how many you can play. So a, a, a queen of clubs can only be played with three other queen of clubs in the game. So this is competing for the spot in people's decks with other queen of clubs. So that's kind of what you have to compare it to to like see how good a card it is a lot of the time. Gotcha. So so. Some of our viewers who are familiar with Savage Worlds will probably be fairly familiar with uh, both the Doomtown uh, lore uh, and as well as you know building building suits, uh, building building card hands essentially for for achieving actions, um, which which I think is really cool. But oh but yeah, it's got a, like a lot of the same DNA. Then we come down to to the actual text, which is a shootout. The shootout thing means that it's a shootout action. The time that you play this card is in the midst of when the bullets are flying. Okay. Uh, so you can't just play this like at any regular time during the day. You got to do it when like it's going down. Right, right, right. So uh, I'll read this out. Uh, choose your dude with one or more influence. Your dude becomes a stud or gains plus two bullets. You may increase the dude's bounty by one to gain both bonuses. Reduce that dude's influence by one until after sundown. So, what does that <laughs> translate does that, that into mean? into <laughs> English? So, I okay. haven't played Doomtown yet. So, dude's influence, like, so the goal of Doomtown is sort of like to control the town, and there's two groups that are both trying to control the town. And influence is sort of like how important each dude that you control is, and you use that influence to like control other towns. But think of it as like the dude's reputation in town. Like someone who is a mayor or a, 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 a captain of industry might have a really high influence and just being at places and just going places lets them control what's going on in the town. Um, whereas a stud, as it mentions later, is someone who is really good at shooting. Um, and bullets are like what determines like how many cards you are drawing in shootouts. So what this basically does is takes a character who's more like influential, who could be used to control the board, and it turns them into a character who's better at gunning down other people, but at the cost of their influence for the day. So think of it as like someone gives in to like their worst side. And just like, you know, if it was like someone everyone knows in town and they gun somebody down in the street and then the rumors go around, they're like, oh, my God, that person, you know, they're violent. They're, they're not who we thought they were stuff like that. So it hurts their influence for the day. And in the game, it's kind of a trade-off because like maybe you need to take out an opponent's uh, dude. So it's less important for you to have a dude who's on the board who can control pieces and more important for you to shoot and kill and not lose your dudes in a shootout. Um, yeah, so this is the sort of thing that, that ruins your reputation. You gave in <laughs> right. to your darkest impulses. And if you're willing to put a bounty on it, which just means that like if people kill you, they get more of a bonus out of it later, um, okay. then you can have even more of a bonus. 
Uh, wow. The interesting thing about this is that bounty sounds like kind of a bad thing because, and basically what it means is people, ghost rock is the currency that's used in this, mm -hmm. which, you know, you also will probably recognize from yeah. uh, Deadlands if you know anything about that. <laughs> right. But getting bounty on your dude means that when they die, other people can get ghost rock. But if you're like an outlaw, if you're someone who like wants to have the reputation of being, you know, wanted, bounty can be a plus too. So this deck, I mean, this card seems really powerful because, I mean, plus two, just take my word for the fact that plus two bullets and turning into a stud, it can be like a really big swing in a shootout. But right. losing influence can be a big swing too. In fact, there used to be, I think that they're not going to have it in the new set, but there used to be a card that just lowered someone's influence by one. And that was considered a really good card wow. uh, to play most of the time. So... The upside to this is that you get to choose when to use it and that sort of thing. So I think it's going to be a really valuable piece in um, in decks that want to run queen clubs, which could either be decks that are just trying to run lots of queens or straight flush decks, as they call them, which just run lots and lots of actions so that they can shoot. Do all they always control the shootouts and how they're going? Uh, and yeah. so the the coin here is zero, so that means that it's does it cost yep. anything means it costs nothing to play and great. that's great because this just makes it you know when you have it in your hand it's just a weapon you've got ready you just whenever you feel like it someone can succumb to that thirst for blood right and wow. i'll tell you cards like this can be really good if you are in a shootout and let's say you have three or four people who are shooting out only one of them is a really good shooter if that guy gets removed or if they do something to make it so that guy can't shoot this can let someone else like take over and uh take the reins like so if somebody did something and knocked bogue out of the ring in uh, wild cards uh -huh. this would let gabe or someone suddenly get better at shooting right <laughs> so that right. we're not totally put out to pasture <laughs> right right so yeah there, there there's a lot of like uh almost role play ability there where where you know because they're losing influence that they, their their emotions get caught up in it and they take Absolutely. over and start yeah. shooting. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. I love that. Uh, I always love that stuff in Doomtown. It does a really good job of that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a real cinematic kind of card play. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Thirst for Blood. We have one more card, and we're, we're going to cover it very quickly. Uh, but I'm really excited about this one. This is Ezreal Jones. So let, yeah, let's just go through it. You just run through it top to bottom. Tell us, tell us what we're looking at. So Ezreal Jones is a nine of spades and spades are all dudes. So they are the sort of people you like put down on the board and have them move around and, and control the town, like I mentioned. Okay. And he is a one draw uh, because he has that copper bullet. That means he is, he's a decent support shooter, but so draw means when you are creating the cards, uh, when, when you are creating the hands to like see who wins in a shootout, that doesn't draw you an extra card. It lets you redraw one of the cards you got. So okay. if I'm drawing six cards, he might let me discard one of those cards and draw a better one to try and get a better hand. Okay. It's good. Being a one bullet is good, but a stud is much stronger. Um, but still, one bullet is, is good for various reasons. And then he's also one influence, which means that he has the ability to like go around and um, uh, control places on the board. But that also means he'd be a viable candidate for that card we just saw, mm -hmm. um, because you can only use that on dudes that have influence to right. lower their influence and get the um, make them a good shooter. Right. Then he also he his card text is simple. It just says "Blessed One." This means that he can cast uh, miracles, which you know is like stuff that Gabe did. Right. It's <laughs> holy abilities. They tend to buff people or to like uh, do things that are a bit more passive than uh, like hexes and bad stuff like that. But they can be very powerful. I, I, I play a blessed deck myself and I, I love uh, blesseds. When and in fact, <laughs> my, my blessed deck does run nines in the card. So this would fit pretty well oh, into my perfect. deck. Okay. Now, the fact that he doesn't have a lot of other text. Um, is fine. It just means that he's a dude who's on the board and he sits there and that's good. Uh, his cost is five. So the cost is how much Ghost Rock you have to pay just to get him out on the board in the first place. 
And then the little skull in the bottom right is his uh, upkeep, which is zero. So once you paid for him, you don't have to keep paying for him all the time. Now, for the most part, compared to like a lot of other blesseds who like cost this much and have these stats, he's not that exciting. Um, because, you know, you can get ones where they are studs or they have two influence. Um, there's a great example is a, a card that's mentioned in this one. And in fact, I'm going to read the flavor text real quick because mm -hmm. I, I think it's cool, which is Padre Ernesto de Diaz and the Order of St. George took me in and set me on a path that's led me to saving souls in Deadwood. It should come as no surprise that a shepherd could really use a gun to guard his flock around these parts. <laughs> um, well, Padre Ernesto de Diaz is another blessed in the game who actually costs, I believe, four mm -hmm. and has an upside ability to everything. So you might wonder, like, what's, what, what is the upside of this card if it seems like it's a little worse than those things? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that's really important here that you might not notice if you don't know the game a bit, is that he doesn't have a faction symbol under his influence there. Okay. So normally, Blesseds are either um, anarchists, which are like, you know, a loose association of, pe of people who have like banded together in uh, Doomtown, who are sort of like the good outlaws in a way, more of a Robin Hood gang than, than like trying to shoot people up. Right. Or be one of the law dogs, who are the people who, you know, follow the good book, your classic preachers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But this guy is a drifter, which means you can play him in any faction. So anyone who runs nines and wants access to um, miracles can use this. Either one of those, or even a faction that doesn't normally have access to miracles could get them through this. So, and the fact that he has zero upkeep means he could be a potential starting dude. Mm -hmm. Like he could be someone you start right on the battlefield and it wouldn't cost you that much going forward. Right. He has influence, he has bullets, um, and he has a relevant keyword ability that like lets him do those spells. So I actually think this is like a very good, or this is a very like playable card. Mm -hmm. And I could see it like really um, being able, being a good enabler for decks that want to do something kind of like different and like try stuff out. And maybe if like a dark deck or, or like a, a deck with the fear mongers, which are like evil clowns and monsters and stuff like that wanted to try and run a miracle on something they could maybe play this card we'll have to see what people like come up to brew with it yeah. my deck that i i recently won a, a, a little online martial tournament with runs uh the values so as i mentioned decks kind of are uh often categorized by the values that they run and mine runs uh nines tens and queens so I could very much see myself slotting in both of these yeah. guys into my deck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because they, they seem like solid choices and they would fit together well. So, Very cool. Well, uh, thank you, Jordan. Thanks for giving us your expert opinion. And uh, I want to say thanks to David Lapp and Pine Box Entertainment for allowing yeah. us to preview these cards. Uh, we hope that you're excited to see them come August 17th, the new Doomtown Kickstarter. With this Kickstarter, like, if you are at all interested in doomtown if it's ever felt cool to you this is the time to get in because mm -hmm. they're like they're putting this out as like a new start for the game mm -hmm. if you're an all long time player this is still going to give like new stuff that you can add to what you already did but but this is like a new starting point for the game going forward which is just really exciting because there's never been a better time to like yeah. get in and this is the place to do it. And this, I love the community. It's really fun. This will be a great time to, to, to pick up decks and to pick up cards, I think, um, at a reasonable cost. And, uh, and, and yeah, get involved in that community. And also, I know that David and, and the team have been working hard to, to make the game accessible to new players and stuff. So, yeah, this is, this is an exciting Kickstarter. So, so we're looking forward to it. And my, my brief experience with Doomtown, which is really just looking at other people <laughs> play it. Uh, but uh, but it, it, is, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch, honestly. Um, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to see what uh, else comes out for this. So exciting so anyway thanks again jordan for coming in and uh into your own uh house <laughs> <to do> this. <laughs> well and, thanks for having me on to yeah. talk about this because <laughs> i will talk about doomtown all day thank you all oh, yes. so much uh and we will see you next time <laughs>